Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and do an example of how we can do one sample hypothesis testing when we are dealing with proportions. Okay, so let's go back in here and let's look. So these two were for our means, and when we're doing our proportions, we need to make sure that we have uh, the central limit theorem is good. So remember, we need at least 15 successes and 15 failures. Okay, so over here, uh, first things, we know that for this study, we should use a z-test for a population proportion, or this equation, this p, which is the sample proportion, pi, which is our hypothesized true proportion, and then this square root is just how we calculate out our standard error. Okay, so we know that the null hypothesis, we're talking about the true population proportions, and we know that this guy is going to be equal to, and then it says we need to get the rest of the information from the problem. So only about 18% of people can wiggle their ears. This is percent lower for millionaires. Uh, of the 356 millionaires surveyed, 43 could wiggle their ears. What can we conclude? Okay, so the baseline assumption is that 18% of people can wiggle their ears. And we think that it is actually going to be less than 0.18 when we are looking at millionaires. So we're going to look at this kind of comparison. So if we were doing this by hand, we need to figure out a few things. So the first thing, uh, let's look at the sample size. N is going to be equal to 356. That's the total number of people surveyed. After we look at that, we can say that alpha, we'll get that in right now, 0 0.05. We know that P, our sample proportion, is going to be 43 divided by N. And so we sampled there's about 12% of the millionaires. And we want to know, is, there, is that a significant difference or is that just kind of from random chance? Okay, so we also want to know pi naught. Oh, sorry, pi naught. And we'll say that equals 0 0.18 for 18%. And once we have that, we are ready to go. So I'm actually also going to put in the standard error. And we'll say that that's the square root of this is going to be pi naught multiplied by 1 minus pi naught. Remember, that's the same thing as saying pi, pi naught c, where it's the percent of successes multiplied by the percent of failures. And we divide then by the sample size, and that will give us our standard error. All right, after we've got our standard error, we're ready to get our z-score. So we can say z equals p minus pi naught, and we can divide by our standard error. And we hit enter and we get this z-score of like negative 2.08. So our test statistic that we're interested in is this z-value. And if I put z here, we can copy and paste this guy. Copy that and paste it there. And then the p-value, like how do we get this p-value? Well, remember, in order to get this p-value, we need to go look at a normal distribution, this, this z. And we need to figure out what is the p-value associated with this. So let's do just a quick, um, oh, a quick graphic uh, to help us out. Okay, so we can go up to our random variables, our normal. And let's plot a normal distribution real quick. And the mean, remember, the, we can also do this with proportions. So we say that this is going to be 0.18. We'll then include our standard error, which is this guy. So let me copy that and paste it in. And then we want to plot, we want to let's shade in what we actually found. And what we actually found with our P, sorry, P, this was our 12%. And we want to see if that's lower. And we'll go from 0. And let's go ahead and plot this guy. So when we plot this out, we see that this is like one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and a little bit more, uh, or almost three standard deviations away. So we want to see what is this area under the curve. Is that a lot or is it a little? And we look at it and it looks like it's really, really small. So let's see if we can actually calculate out what that p-value is. So what we do is we go to basic statistics. Uh, we go to our normal distribution and we want to look at the probabilities. So the value that we put in here is this z-value. So we can copy that and put it in. And since we've got it in the z value, in the that's what called like normalizing our data. And so we just leave it as the mean as zero and the standard deviation as one, because we're talking about number of standard deviations here. 
and we want the lower tail because we want this area to the left. And so let's just go ahead and click OK. And we see that we get a p-value of 0 0.0018. So we can copy that and we can paste it in. Oops, looks like I didn't copy it. We can copy this value and paste it in. So our p-value is going to be less than or equal to alpha. And based on this, we should reject the null hypothesis. And then our conclusion, we can say that the data suggests that the population proportion is significantly lower than 18% at the alpha level of 0.05. So there's statistically significant evidence to conclude that the population proportion of millionaires who can wiggle their ears is lower than 18%. And so we can click on that. And once we do that, we can, we're, we're all done. Now, typically, this problem doesn't include it, but typically we also want to include our uh, confidence interval. And I can show you how to do that as well. Um, and with this, I also want to show how we can do all of this uh, very quickly inside of our commander. So this is how we kind of did it by hand. If you don't want to do it by hand, you can also go to just basic statistics, inference, and we can do hypothesis testing, and we can do a hypothesis testing for a proportion. Ooh, and it looks like that I'll need to restart my... Let me try it one more time. Okay, there we go. So this is the pop-up window that it's supposed to look like. And we just put type in the number of successes and the number of failures. So the number of successes that we had were 43. And when we do 356 minus 43... Hold on, 356 minus 43, that gives us 313 failures. We can paste that in, and we want it to say less than, and we want that the null was 0.18. And once again, we wanted to make sure that there needs to be at least 15 successes and 15 failures from what we expect is going to happen. So we do 0.18 multiplied by our sample size, which is going to be 356, and we get 64.8, and the number of failures is going to be 0.82 times 356, and we get 291. So we're good. We're going to expect to see that many, given that the null hypothesis is true. Okay, so we can go ahead and click uh, OK now. And if we look at this, this should give us the same values that we got. Check it out. We've got this test statistic. That's our Z, negative 2.908, negative 2.908. Our p-value, 0 0.0018, 0 0.0018. And so we can shove in our sample statistics into our commander as well. And let's say that we even wanted to know what the um, what our confidence interval is. We can do that too. We can look at our confidence intervals for a proportion. And we put in the number of successes. Once again, we had 43. And we had 313. Oh, wait, 31. Sorry. Yeah, 313. And we said that our confidence level is 0.95. You can click OK. And there it gives us our uh, interval and our uh, sample proportion as well. Anyhow, so there's lots of things that we can do with our commander for it to do most of our work for us. Uh, so that we don't have to go through and do this kind of manual calculation. Our commander is very good at doing that. And so we can just kind of let it do its thing. And that's how we go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and check our answers. And checking your answers, we see that, yes, we went through and did this one okay. So I hope that helps you understand how you can do these one sample hypothesis test for proportions with the sample statistics.